Right. Okay. So, so okay. So so was uh, hormonally based. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Strongly estrogen receptive. Okay. And um, before the cancer, that was seven years ago. Yeah. Okay. Before the cancer, any other medical history? Um, high blood pressure. High blood pressure. Okay. First one. Today. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Everybody else said low. No. So, yeah. Okay. And the fatigue started when? About a year after finishing <laughs> treatment. The and first cold I had after finishing treatment. So you finished treatment about a year afterwards. You had a cold. Yeah. And then ever since you've been on the tired side. Tired isn't the right way of describing it. It's it's low energy, which feels different to tired. It's a, it's tired feels like a head thing, whereas the fatigue feels like a whole body lack of energy okay. thing. Okay. Do you feel heavy in the body? Very. Okay. Uh, so it's not. So what you're saying, it's not lack of motivation, it's not any of these things. It literally, I want to get up and I feel like I'm who? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, even if, that's why I say it doesn't feel like tired, because I can wake up like it and my brain yeah. can feel... Refreshed. And refreshed, the body but is the body isn't. Is isn't. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Have they checked your thyroid? Yes, and, and that, is now, okay. that is now underactive as well. But it okay. wasn't when I was diagnosed with the fatigue. That came afterwards. No, I understand. Um, they diagnosed you with fatigue. I had. Um, I saw. <laughs> yeah, I saw. I'm, I'm wondering what the actual diagnosis. Because there are there is a list of criteria for oh, um, okay. for cancer related fatigue. Oh, uh, okay. Because you're. Yeah. But also, I also, which is what my diagnosis is. But I also fit the criteria for chronic fatigue. Got you. Fair enough. Um, no, the reason I asked for, for about the thyroid is you can see there's uh, some sort of like swelling in the throat also. So, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if, you know, okay. Um, is there any place in your body where you can sort of, is it the whole body or is there a pl place that feels more heavy or, you know, I asked you to point to where is it heavy? At the moment, legs, top of my thighs is okay. often the place that it hits first. And where would it move to afterwards? Arms. Arms. So it's not in the torso? Not particularly, no. Okay. And where in the arms? Upper arms? Upper arms, yeah. So anything okay. that feels like, you know, any action that feels like lifting my arms just feels like it's too much effort. Okay. All right. So, would you mind face me? Yeah. <laughs> Notice that there is a downwardness in her abdomen. Okay? So, it's interesting. She does, she, well, she's probably never tried to lift anything with her abdomen because it's not like, I think I'll have a cup of tea. <laughs> you know, lift it with the, you know. It's like we lift things with our arms or we have to lift our legs in order to walk. We, but there is a down, right? There's a sort of, okay? So, I'm going to suspect that there is some, some lack of chwai, lack of kick capacity in, for her, okay? So we'll, we'll see what, what we can do. All right, um, do you have a pair of shorts by any chance? Underneath these. Wonderful, and are you, are you very cold? No, it's fine. Person? Okay, so if you don't mind taking this off, the shoes and socks off, and, and we'll put you up here. So, oops, hold on. We've got a little mox of stuff going on here. Let me just change that for you. So, parents, anything in the family that's worth um, mentioning? Mum has high blood pressure. Uh -huh. um, dad was diabetic. Oh. Okay. Um, but he didn't look after himself. So. Okay. So it was expected. Sorry. So type two, a diabetic is old age. Yes. Gotcha. So face up. Any aches or pains? Um, a bit in my legs. A bit in where in your legs? On the top of my thighs. Okay. No question. Rapid thoughts. <laughs> All this discussion, like you know, there's you know clearly a rapid thoughts. Oh, there is a quite. Thin, hmm? There is a rapid. No. Oh no, it's it's definitely rapid. There's no question. Um, 
you know, it, it doesn't matter how much space there could be between, I mean, there's, there's no space between the beats actually, but it's also rapid. I'm, I'm going to estimate that this is a 90 beats per minute. I mean, I, I, I don't do it with clocks, so I don't, don't really know. But, um, and it is thin, wiry, and it changes quality upon when you press on it. So definitely autonomic nervous system. Uh, left press, right press? Left. Left. Uh, reconstruction? You know? Oh. Implant. Implant. Okay. Ah, wait a second. And uh, the fatigue, they, have, you, have you considered it all, or has anybody <coughs> suggested removing the implant because of the fatigue? No. Because? Because of all of the other treatments, because of chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and tamoxifen. Could all, be, could all be, yeah, 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 I understand. They can sit contributing factors, and that's what my <coughs> surgeon reckons is the big problem, is, is it's from those rather than from... Yeah, I mean, I, I, no, I, I, don't, uh, I don't have the, um, enough knowledge or, or, or authority to, to be able to say, but the problem is because the implant itself can also create, can be a contributing factor. So the problem is, since the, all the other stuff, although you're, are you still to maximum? Yeah. Okay. That's the one contributing factor I, I would say is still reasonable now, because the other ones happened seven years ago, and it, if they're not clearing, something else is interfering with that. And so maybe the implant is a possibility, that's all. But, but it could be you know. the tamoxifen. <coughs> no, 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 it could yeah. be anything. Um, so I, that's why I'm not saying, you know, remove this and you will be fine. Yeah. I'm just asking yeah. if, um, all right. So you asked about the quivering. She, I, I think, yeah, she has a quivering. So chances. Mm, they, they have to see the pulse. Mm? It looks like you can see. The yes, pulse. exactly. Yeah, that's what I mean. That it's yeah. quiver. So I don't have to touch to feel the pulse, and when I do touch, it's like very clear. You, you feel the pulse when I press, right? Okay. Yeah. So we're going to try and make it so that when I touch, by the end of the treatment, you don't feel the pulse. I may not be successful, but that's one of the things I want to want to do. So, you know, a cancer diagnosis, etc., is, is is definitely something that's going to throw the person into my. You know, this is not like oh, I just got diagnosed with cancer. I think you know, I think screwed up. You know, it it it, it throws you off a loop, and so there's it's not an it's it's fairly. Uh, I could, "Quote unquote acceptable that she has a <coughs> night boss. You know, you could have anticipated it. Okay, so all right. When I press here, I just feel my fingers. Okay. So if I press it anywhere else and it doesn't feel like this, just let me know. Yeah. Okay. So are you okay, Hale? I'm fine. You're you fine. Okay. I just want to make sure. Hi here. It's a little tender. A little tender. And right stop twenty six twenty seven. Yeah, a little turn okay. there as well. And below kidney 16. That's okay. And the other side. That's a little tender. Okay. And is that tender or just the pulse skin? A little tender there. A little tender right now. Okay. So, the wind 12. That's okay. And 15. That's fine. Okay. Compare for me the right side and the left side. Right side feels tighter. Tighter. Okay. And how about here? The same? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Right. Does that feel weird when I do that? No. No. Okay. I'm just checking. No. No. Okay. Fair enough. So up to now. We have here, which is and here. Oketsu. Yes. So, so she has Oketsu and she has right stomach 2627. <coughs> are you okay? You okay? Are you scared? No, I'm fine. <laughs> and she has red nine. And maybe a little bit here. Yeah. Okay. And red twelve is good and some tightness here. Okay. Anything here? No. And how's the SCM? It's a bit sore though. The third one? Yeah. Oh. And how about here? Not so much that okay. side. So right side, bottom. And one, two, three, four. The, the 
bottom one. To the bottom. In left side, two, three, four. Not that side. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Box out. Five, five. Okay, so the lateral side. In one, two, three, four. <coughs> Third one and fifth one. Okay. Now, she has both high blood pressure and she possibly has a hormonal component going on because of the, if she's given tamoxifen. So, under the oxford reflects both high blood pressure, autonomic nervous system, and the further out you go, the, the more it tends to reflect hormonal issues. Okay? So, I'm not sure which it, which it is. Um, any discomfort? No. Okay. So the only other thing that's interesting here, oh, lots of things can be interesting, is that she tends to show more things on the right side in spite of the fact that the breast that was affected was on the left, which suggests that, you know, with, like I told you people, with cancer, always check the liver. Okay. So it suggests that there is, well, she does show liver to begin with, okay, and it reflects further up on the neck in that she shows here also, and she shows on the cervical here, right? Okay, so my job is to try and clear these things that up to now you said, yes, I feel this is uncomfortable, etc., etc. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so there is one thing that does show on the left side but does not show on the right side, which is look at this foot, look at stomach 41. It's over, it's overstretched. This is a, a little bit more, you know, quote unquote nor normal. But this leg somehow is held differently. Okay? So, any discomfort here? No. And how about here? Yeah. Yes. Okay, liver two. And this one? No. Okay. So, Press on liver four. How is here? It feels a bit strange, but it's not particularly. Okay. Hard. Here. Okay. So here is your bit, how it felt before, right? Yeah. You said there was something there. And how is it? Now? Less. And half less, three quarters less. So how much? Half less. Half less. Okay. How about this guy? Much less. Much less. How about this guy? Not particularly less. Okay. Um, thyroid belongs in the kidney category. Okay. So, how is now? Better. By how much? Quite a lot less. Quite a lot. Okay. And how about this one? Less tight. Less tight. Okay. So the liver two pressure pain dictates liver four, liver eight, but then I'm looking at I still need to treat the thyroid, so I need to treat the kidney. And so therefore but my choice is she did not have kidney two pain, and my choice of kidney nine is because kidney nine is a better kidney point for the liver. Okay? Does that any any reason why is that? A, is that Sorry, a, is it because it's the the wood point or? It's no, know? it's not a wood point. It's uh, kidney one. Wood point. Yeah. Um, no, kidney nine. I'm not sure, but kidney nine seems to have a better resonance. You know, it's like, like detox. Kidney nine, large dose of fifteen, stuff yeah. like that. It's, kidney nine has a better resonance with the liver, although we do use kidney seven, for example, for liver excess. Kidney seven, spleen seven, heart three, per yeah. twenty four. Yeah. Remember that combination? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So let's see if 
Let's do Oketsu. Why not? <laughs> wow. Wow, <laughs> yes. I mean, no, no. I mean, I was going to say, let's challenge this and not, but there's plenty of people who've never seen Oketsu in their lives because they've studied with me only. And then they're like, you know, so it's good for them to see it. So, liver for one thumb's worth below the, the ankle bone. Not here, but here. Oh, I always, I always put it. In the ankle? Yeah. No, no, no. Link shoot number two says oh. one soon below. We must not violate the link shoot. <laughs> it works, though. <laughs> Don't say it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> right. So, liver four, lung five on the left. That's the tr so, oh, so cool tree. And the reason I'm saying is, is because if she is, if the central issue is the liver, I'd rather clear the oketsu on its own first to help the liver, rather than clear the liver and say, oh, see, I can clear the liver and the oketsu will go away, oh, you know, that the oketsu is, is secondary. This is a place where, okay, let's let deal with the oketsu. How's this now? It's okay. It's okay, good. All right. Next. So this time we do liver 4 and liver 8. Then kidney 9. Less tender. How much would you say is left? I don't know, it feels different rather than, it doesn't feel tender anymore, just... Okay, all right, fair enough, we'll see if we can clear it all together. How about here? That feels better. That feels better. Can you tell me about how much? <laughs> yeah, mostly better. Mostly better, okay. Much better? Yeah. Okay. And how about this guy that was in like somewhat undefined quality? Um, yeah, a lot of that's better now. Okay. So I'm going to do motion because of the red line pulse, but also remember, I, I said to you, I don't, I think there's a lack of choice. So let me start with inner yin, which is also because of cancer I need to do anyway. So let, let's start with inner yin. And we need to remember that it started with a cold. Okay, so we still have to go for a new. The immune system, actually. Mm -hmm. My body gets rid of colds very well. Uh -huh. It feels like my body overreacts, though. Overreacts. Okay. So it feels so it feels like my body shuts down to try and protect me from the virus and doesn't mm -hmm. notice that my immune system has happily got on and dealt with the cold. Meaning it keeps the immune system keeps going. Yeah, so that And what does that feel like when So you, it's, you know, that like that feeling when you've had really bad flu and you can't get off the sofa and that it, that's how it feels, even though actually the, the virus has been has has gone. I'm stuck in that recovery phase. Gotcha. Don't help me. Anything around here? Yeah. Okay. UB12 is called something with wind, doesn't it? It's the wind shoe or something. <laughs> We're going to have a check on exactly what the name is. Fang Men, maybe? 
If she says that her immune system like keeps staying in that mode of fighting a cold, then I'm wondering if the wind gate isn't you know uh, isn't closing the opening quite correctly. So you have pain here, right? Okay. Relax. How's now? Um, the one on the back. Yeah, I don't care about the, the oh, arm. I don't care yeah. about that. I'm very sorry. Okay. Yeah, that feels better. How much is left in there? Yeah. Very little. Very little. Okay. So. Is that the immune point? Yes. Immune yes. Point? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you're not thinking bladder 12 for like post viral fatigue type symptoms. It's just your. You no, it's just her that. particular yes. situation right. is that she has. Um, you know, her, her immune system doesn't shut down, meaning the the wind the, the metaphor will be the wind gate is not shutting down. about now is that is this because if the leg is like this of course it's going to be hard to lift the leg you know it makes sense um, you know that she's going to feel that heaviness okay so so she has an unusual form of stomach chi okay if somebody wants is it okay if people touch yeah so if you start at, at stomach 36, you'll feel like a very soft, almost like sinking feeling. And then when, you, so what you're getting is not the regular nodules you would expect from stomach chi, but there are still nodules here. Go ahead. And I'm just going to try. Just does that make sense for that? Mm -hmm. Say that. So then when you press here, it feels almost soft. It's like you, you didn't, you don't expect to sink so much. Right. Then uh, around here. You started getting the little nodules, yeah. and they're not that. Like, usually, some she feels more. The, the nodules feel stronger, but with her, there's like it's almost like it's too soft. The stomach chi yeah. is too st soft, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I didn't check. No, it isn't true. There's, so the, this this is not way more typical stomach chi. And way, way better tone, and this is like the whole stomach channel is lacking a tone. This one isn't. She still has stomach chi here, and we'll outdo it. But this is the one that's interesting. So, um, so this, by the way, will be the one I definitely want to do mox on. Yes, yes, yes. You're talking about the wind gate open. Can you, um, how, no, no, I totally understand. I think that's a fantastic image. Um, what about hay fever? All I'm saying with her is that it, it isn't that a specific condition. She describes something that says my use. She's not. She's not diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. Though. Do you see this? Do you remember I once told you that according to Amy, this is just autoimmune, right? Often people with autoimmune will have this. She has this, but she's not diagnosed as autoimmune. I mean, you've seen plenty of doctors, I know. If you, she had an autoimmune disorder, she would say 
Yeah. You know, but, I mean, they would have found it by now. Yeah. Because especially if they're finding more thyroid nowadays, they've decided, uh, I don't know if the trend has come to here, but nowadays everybody with thyroid problems is Hashimoto's. You know, they've mm -hmm. decided, because they, find, they can, apparently didn't find antibody, they, the antigens or whatever it is in, in, for Hashimoto's on everybody with all 90% of people with thyroid. So now everybody's suddenly Hashimoto's, but I was taught that Hashimoto starts as hyper, not as hypo. Right. So it doesn't make sense to me, but who knows? Um, yes. But she's describing a condition that where the immune system kicks in and won't, won't yeah, let go. Yeah. So that's why the wind gate so I think it's not it's not it's not it's not it's not not it's not it's it's not it's not it's not it's with hay fever, it's like they're reacting and some of are stop they, they would stop us, you know, if, if the pollen stops, they'll, they'll stop, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know what? Here it's an oversensitivity, right? Yeah, well, yeah, here it's not oversensitivity, here it's like not very much. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I get symptoms of fatigue most of the time. Um, but yeah, I can feel like I've done too many days. Oh, well, oh, 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 you still have me on. I really don't have to get down. It's just eating my thoughts. I don't know. It's just eating my thoughts. Yes, I think that doesn't make me so much. Yeah, I tried to do this. How is the bloating right now? We're not done. Yeah, yeah. Is that better? Okay. When you say a little, can you give me a percentage? And I will do stomach for the one here because it's, um, which is part of stomach to begin with, but also because I want to. Don't move the laser stuff. No, well, in this case, the structure is so weird, you know, because of the, the, it's a little harder, but I'm really just going one tendon over from, from no, no, yeah, no, you don't want to add an inflammatory would be here. In her, there isn't actually for many people, there's plenty of space. This is called stomach chi, it's the bumps on the stomach channel between stomach, say 40 and 41. Because you know, there's no points, the, the, yeah. the lower half. So, but whatever bumps you find, but notice that I take the stomach channel right on the bone, yeah. or just to the side of the bone. I don't take it on the other side of the tibialis anterior, like how many people think yeah. stomach 36. What do you think it is presenting in terms of what's not working when uh, signs are shown in the stomach cheek? Um, it can be digestion, but it often relates to energy. It's, it's this thing where the pulse doesn't have, the pulse just pecks up and mm -hmm. it doesn't have a slippery quality, so there's a lack of quote unquote stomach chi. That's literally, you know, so, but what it means, so it, it's, it's generally some sort of um, a lack of energy, if you mm. like. <coughs> it's not always related to digestion. Mm. Okay. Because you know, a lot of people that have nicotine and things like that, it just seems to be always. Uh, well, 85% of the time comes with digestive. There's a lot of, yeah, yeah. Well, given what people eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's all that's great.
No, I told her. Yeah. She yeah. We'll take a few more minutes. Yeah. Or, uh, I, I find the estrogen dominance thing quite common, you know, like uh-huh. thyroids or, yes, or yes, whatever. Yes. And I'm thinking, are we thinking that the liver isn't processing hormones? So well, that's it? one thing. It yeah. could be a liver, you know, so we're treating liver. Uh, it could be a UB62 type um, situation. UB62. I didn't check you. Oh, 66, sorry. Yeah. Uh, which is a lot, it all, it, it's hard to know yeah. um, where, where to, you know, so you, yes, you have the option of, you know, it could be a pituitary issue in terms of de- how it demands, um, you know, but generally it isn't simply because it's more, more to do with how the tissue absorbs, you know, in this case mm-hmm. it's like, you know, this sensitivity is, um, and then you have, you do have the liver, uh, breaking down hormones. Yeah. What was the what was the thing that you said previously? The abs- absorbing tissue, the, t- the tissue. Well, this cancer, you know, the hormonal issues can be. It's that. It, okay, so you can think of hormones as coming from the pituitary. The pituitary makes the demand for the production of hormones. But in this case, what's happening? It's not, that, it's not that the pituitary is demanding anything, it's that the tissue is absorbing the hormones and using something with them that, they, that you'd rather they didn't. So I don't think that, they're, that the people who have cancer who that are you know, estrogen sensitive are a pituitary type, that's not the issue. The issue is more in the tissue itself. That they're, it's not that they're producing too much estrogen, it's that the tissue is too sensitive to estrogen. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Can you touch a bit about um, foggy head? You know, foggy. It's not as if like a spleen type, like you, you're, you're repetitive thinking around the same things over and over. But uh-huh. then just a sort of something a little bit more substantial, blocking your thought to be just a bit more clear and then capacity to hear the cognitive functions not. And I see that quite a lot with the people with the chronic fatigue as well. So as well as menopause, same thing. <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's take her yeah. and we'll, let me... Okay. Sorry, sorry, I'll be just a... Finished that one. So the treatment for that, the uh, tissues, oh. tissues absorbing too much. I don't know that I have a particular, you know. So inner yin is a hormonal area, and it's, that seems to be, work better for me than for those cases than UB sixty six. That's why I didn't check UB sixty six on her. Thank you. UB sixty six is too much. I don't know. I, no, bladder succeeds manipulates hormones, but I don't think the, the issue with people who's, who has cancer that responds to hormonal stimulation is not that they are producing or not producing hormone. The issue is that the tissue is responding to hormone. The, the issue is not hormonal in the sense in that sense. The issue is more an, an absorption issue. Thank you. Does, does that yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a foggy area for me. I'm not yeah, so I'm not getting Would you, for a second, lift your head for me? Okay. Do you see this? How strong that is. Can you do it? Okay, so let's go. How strong was that, sir? Valley. Valley, yeah. I'm not valley. 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 Yeah. Okay. So UB27 is more just some shoe, but it's also sacroiliac ligament. Would you lift your head up? No, same, same. Okay, look, you can let go. No, no problem. It's not gonna. 
We're not going to get anything out of that. Okay. So if you feel this vertebrae, you'll, you can feel that it's puffier. T11, T12, it doesn't show so much on the right side, but the left side shows quite a bit if somebody wants to. It's almost like stick, the vertebrae sticking out. Come here. Don't be afraid of pressing into the spine. Because if you hear, you're, it's hard. You're yeah, feeling the spine a little too far. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I've got a burn on my hand. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. That, you didn't bother that. But that was, I was aware of it. <laughs> No? Okay. So instead of doing this, do this. Mm -hmm. And then you'll feel it, hopefully. Oh, yeah. A bit more Just slide it. Yeah. Yeah? It's funny. So sometimes, you know, it's like if, if you, do, you know, how you move your hand is going to affect how what you're feeling, unfortunately. So calm down. Did you say go closer to the spine, Abby? Well, she was on the bladder line, that's why I said, oh. okay, cut, you know, you'll <coughs> feel it a little better. So, I'll be after quick. Belly back, I mean, you were just checking a small intestine. Well, no, not so. I was actually checking, I mean, I was actually checking sacroiliac, but in her right. case, because the, she's talking about two, you know, premenopausal and bloating. Mm -hmm. And the, prima, the, um, the bloating, we think, might be related to small intestine. She only got 20% yeah. relief on the bloating at this yeah. point. So like we, we need to get, we need a better, a bigger card. Mm -hmm. right it's like it just feels stickier yeah. rather than lumpy. Any discomfort when I press here? Um, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, okay. Anything here? Yep. Also? Yep. Okay. When I press here, which one is more, more uncomfortable? This one or these two? Uh, the bottom two. The bottom is on left. Okay. When I press here, how how are the bottom two? It relieves it. Relieves it. Okay. Small intestine three. Because I'm checking now hormonal situations. Let's go. And so I'm checking UB thirty two. And to release UB thirty two, I can easy, either use small intestine thirteen hormonal point, or you can call it Sanja 15 either way, it really doesn't matter which one you want to call it, or um, heart shoe could do it. Okay. How are they doing now? Uh, much better. Much better, good. Did, didn't, in, um, didn't he call said small intestine 27 is something to do with the whole hormone point to balance the progesterone and the estrogen imbalance or something like that? I don't know. No. That I don't know. Yeah. Um, I might be misunderstanding with something. I, or you might know something I, <laughs> I have <laughs> well, no clue. Family, I, think I don't know. I don't know that small is, UB27 is a hormonal point per se. Right. I mean, small intestine. You can say, by, by the definition of small intestine from a Chinese perspective, you know, separating the pure from the turbid mm -hmm. would sound like it has something Sorry, to do with yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it. I think it's like sacral iliac. Sacral iliac. Yeah. yeah. Or well, UB27 sort of thing. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, what did you say? Released bladder 32. Like PM. Small intestine 13 releases. UB32 if it's hormonally related. And is that what you've done and there? And T11, T12, sorry, and so, yeah. And so I did not needle UB32. I needle UB27, I needled sacral iliac instead. Because? Because originally there was pain there and also, you know, yes, she's, maybe she's hormonal, but I'm more interested in that, that valley back. Hold on, let, let's see what okay. happens at the end of the... So lift, lift your head again if you can. No, that's still pretty, okay, it's pretty tight. Oh, 
gosh, I can feel those. Sorry. Okay. Lift uh, your head again. No. As much as you can't, you can't get those muscles to relax and you know, because it's a habit that's too long. It's different than just doing pressure pain. And one, just one more, just for the sake of it. No. Okay, let go. So you're just checking to see if you can visualize If I can, if I can get this of, to, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But, you know, any discomfort? No. Okay, good. How about here? No. No. So the last thing I'm going to do is, because she has a digestive issue, is let's look at small intestine uh, 11 on the right side. Is that a thing then, small intestine on the right, is for digestive stuff? Yes. Okay. Yeah. She doesn't have a huge amount of puffiness here, so that's okay. Um, but if there's a slightly different place than a puffiness, would you go for the puffiness? Yes, of course. Right? Yeah. Yes, of course. But, you know, I... There's a little bit here. Here, come t touch this. Yeah. Okay, so there's a little bit, you know, I'm... You know, some people it's much larger. <laughs> okay, comfortable? Yep. Yeah. All right. So, any questions? Would you still download the um, SI11 on the right, if it was sorrow, if you try and release it, or would you just SI go around? SI11? Um, no, you did it for the 13. 13. You've just done surrounded 11. Oh, you? I surrounded 11 on the right, yes. Yeah, yeah. For it, digestion. Yeah. yeah, if it was sore, you pressed it and then they say, ouch. Okay, you do then I'm trying to resolve it. it. I'm trying to resolve it so my options are further down the small intestine channel. The problem is I already died with small intestine yeah. 3 and her. So then, the, in this, in, in the case where I've already done small intestine three, and I don't really want to repeat, uh, you can conceivably do small intestine six. The other thing is, I would try with UB twenty seven. It's already yeah. in there. Yeah. Because yeah. bladder sixty releases it very well. Bladder sixty yeah. releases small intestine yeah. eleven. Okay. Yeah. 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 You got to one other options. UB sixty. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure why, but it really does. Well, if it does, it does. <laughs> we don't have to be sure. Of what about releasing the other side, small intestine 11 on the left? Okay, on the left, that's where UB60 comes in. Okay. Oh, because it's okay. cardiac. Okay. okay. So, for cardiac, we I find it the opposite. It, for me, it works on the right, but when I try it on the left, it doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. So, on the, what you do on the left is you check UB60. If there's pressure pain on it, you do 66 and 67. If not, you need to be 60 upwards. Yeah, okay. So that is one of the tricks for cardiac. So, is there any other things that you could try if that doesn't... Two. Uh, maybe 27. Okay. Possibly heart three. Okay. And what about the uh, immune in, in the part the future um, in the front of treatment? Would you right. anything? Uh, yeah, we could do 214 auto, yeah, okay. for example. Sure. I mean, so we might as well. Um, so what, what, oh, no, it's small intestine. No, that's small intestine. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering whether it was just because of the outer. And uh, notice, no, no, and so I've so also not, do you notice how big yeah, 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 yeah. So. Um, I'm sorry, was it small intestine 13 we surrounded there on the right? 11. Ele 11 on the right for digestive, yeah. yeah. 13 has to do with, yeah. So she's a, there's a lot of small intestine stuff yeah. going on for her, interestingly enough. Um, you know, some of it is not related to the digestion, but to the hormones. Of course. So. Well, maybe both are, who knows? In the body, what happens?
Let's just. So, any fees left here? A, a little bit. A little bit? Okay. So, mastoid belongs to liver 13. Hi, how's now? Much better. Much better. and heart, what's the connection between those? Am I being stupid here? Bladder, Do you remember? Oh, small intestine, because the bladder and the small intestine and the heart oh, and okay. the... Okay. Those, you know, the, the, smite, the heart fires through the small intestine to the bladder. Oh, and beca oh, because it goes... You know, I mean, the, the, there, there's, a, there's a pattern of heart fire going to the small intestine into the bladder, therefore you have urinary problems. I didn't know that. Yeah, one. oh, okay. Good. To be honest, I left, TCM, I left TCM quite quickly. Well, <laughs> and came, yeah, but it came over to this. It's not like there's so many patterns. It's one, pa one, more, one of the patterns in TCM is, is that one. So that, that is the connection. Um, as far as we, you know, we can make it out. Um, but, but bladder 60 does seem to have um, some effect on cardiac. Any other questions? So, um... You had a question about the foggy. Okay. So foggy head can come from a number of different options. Okay, so you can, you know, the official dogma would be that the spleen yang is not reaching the head, right? The clear yang is, you know, that's, that's what it's supposed to do. So you can think about it, you can try it as a spleen issue. Okay. Now, in your case, you said this is a patient that, that has chronic fatigue, that has... Yeah, any... Hmm? Any, uh, any uh, chronic fatigue. Okay. And then a uh, lot of adrenal um, is kind of um, in the big picture as well, because when she knows she's tired, that something kicks in and then she you know, gives her the sort of uh, uncomfortable feeling and... So when she's tired, she gets an uncomfortable feeling, and yeah, then the she goes foggy. Yeah. Hmm? Not yeah, able not, to see. Yeah. Okay. Um, and palpitation as well. Okay. How did you relate that to adrenal, though? Um, well, I think it's an input from her side. She, she calls herself adrenal fatigue. But, okay, so there's a... That's a dangerous... Apart from, yeah, apart from that... Uh, the point because what you described is more, yeah go uh, did work not all the time right. but on uh, it, it does work very well okay. so kidney and uh, kidney transition yes, or yes. including that under gotcha. the so. I would say that what you're describing in this fogginess is she starts getting the fatigue she doesn't sleep. And it's like you said, something switches or something like that. It sounds more like an autonomic nervous system yeah, disorder. Um, yeah, lots of nervous systems. I would say that would be more your thing to treat than... I mean, I'm not saying adrenal is not part mm -hmm. of the picture, yeah. but I, I would think that if you, if you address the autonomic, the autonomic nervous system, mm -hmm. and since it's sleep, you might think of spleen 3 and pericardium, don't, don't jettison, don't, don't let go of the adrenal necessarily, but I would add maybe spleen 3 plus pericardium. And maybe, and also with anything to do with the brain, check the neck very well, mm -hmm. which suggests that you will probably get to Sanjay 8 at some point. But, yes, but Sanjay 8 is my... Your favorite <laughs> form. <Yeah>, yes. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I would say. And then on the back, look at do 2 and T5. Okay. Abby, could you say about swallowing? I've got a patient who's about, oh, swallowing, yes, uh, he's male, he's quite healthy, he's a chef, um, he's about 50, um, quite active in the rest, but he's had this thing where swallowing has been a bit of an issue. Should show possibly on stomach 9 area, 
He's also had, um, he's also got uh, a bright, bad shoulder and sort of like his lower back and things like that. So. Everything that a chef should have. Mm. Uh, bad shoulder, standing all day, so I'm tired of the food, <laughs> I don't want to swallow. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, so the rest of it, I, I, you know, I don't know if I could relate to the swallowing in fairness, except for, you yeah. know, like making psychological profiles that don't, don't mean anything. But <coughs> I would say the swallowing may show either, like here, under the uh, under the teeth, you know, kind of thing, or between there and stomach line, is likely to show. And you can try a number of different things. One thing you can try is kidney, because kidney does relate to the throat. If, if you feel the swallowing comes more from the throat rather than from the tongue, that it's more of a throat issue than a tongue issue, then look at kidney. If you feel that it's at, at if, uh, and, and in either case, it'll be stomach, possibly stomach, you could do it. And if you feel that it's more of the uh, tongue, I would look more at possibly the spleen. As a muscle. I was thinking that weak stomach acid, it does seem to get this kind of left-sided SCM. Ah. You know, that one where they go okay. to the stomach, 11, stomach 36. It well, does okay. soften here. Okay, then I would try that, but I'm, I'm not sure how I can, ex I mean, you know, anything's possible for people, so, you yeah. know, it's not as things are not explainable, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm not getting a clear um, explanation of how that relates to the, the, lack, the inability to mm -hmm. swallow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so if something works, it works, but, you know, then the question is, if it's working, this is how I look at it. Mm. If it's supposedly working, but then a person's asking me a question about it, it means that it's only either working temporarily. Yeah, or yeah, working it's not, it's not, it's not holding. <laughs> so. It's not holding. And also, I, I, I just used that because I had this, and you know, this was from something that I, I learned in class and stuff. And I was like, okay, well, that seems to work a bit, and mm. things got improved a bit. But I don't feel I've got actually got to the root of. So the, the other problem, thing, okay, and so understanding if you want, well, and sometimes we can't get to the root of the problem, and that's okay. <laughs> so something else that reaches the throat, and, you know, is the thyroid point under the... It has got low thyroid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh wait, 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 okay, so now that changes the whole picture. Ah, Cause yes, first for a man to have low thyroid Yes, it's as well. kind of rare. Yeah. Okay, so I would say, you know, so the swallowing is like more, much more likely to come from the thyroid than it is from coming anywhere else. So, so you, you already have a, an idea for a diagnosis, which may be proven wrong, but you know, you have, you've, you've already established yourself a criteria that you want to test right. or work with it. Because if he, has low th low th if he has a thyroid problem, then that can explain anything in the throat area. Mm -hmm. okay. So I would, I would place the priority on treating the thyroid. Mm. Yeah. Which means kidney channels and on the back, you know, due to T11, T12, T7, T5. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you have Kawhi's ear points? No, 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 I'm just looking at the clock. Kawhi's ear points, okay, the thyroid? So you fold the ear and then there's the tendon, and under the tendon is the Kawhi thyroid ear point, which operates for the neck yeah. as well. So hypo and hypo? Both hypo and hypo, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you know. need um, um, I'll, I'll show you this one. Uh, between, uh, yeah, those, you go between those two, those, 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 those curves of the body, do you remember? Right, all three. Yeah. Okay. But you, you do one of those between, I think, you know, the most, the best one of that between there. No, you're not doing T7 and T5 necessarily. I don't know, you do. Curves of the body, thank you. Curves of the body, yeah. And muscle, you know, so like, Abby, with this low thyroid, can that explain what kind of muscular issues that aren't kind of clearing at all, or is that a separate? Uh, yes, because it's a metabolism that doesn't, you know, that's, the body's metabolism isn't really fully there in some way, so it could explain it, it's hard to know. You know, this is the problem with these things, you can't, you know, don't latch onto any one explanation 
until you know, every, you, know you, you need to have the whole picture of the person. So when, when someone says to me, you know, because we started with swallowing, so that was a symptom, and then we're, we're now we're getting, so now we have to look at, really at the whole patient. Because when we don't, this is when, this is when we get the situation where it works for, you know, like, just like with Siobhan. So, you know, it worked, you know, like she, she came out with, oh, my hip feels great, I'm so happy, blah, 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 but then she comes back this morning and she says, well, actually, it's the same. Yeah, you know, so it was nice to have a few hours, you know, that were pretty free. Yeah. And maybe if we did it 20, 30, 40 times, um, you know, good. My, my pockets get heavier, her, her thighs get lighter, but, you know, wonderful. It's, yeah. it's a good exchange, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, especially for me. Yeah. So, but that's not really the way you want to work. You do yeah. not, you, well, I mean, you do, I mean, it's up to you, but my method of working is trying to get people to come as few times as possible rather than as many times as possible. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, you can do the local points or the whatever, and eventually the, per the person will get better because you keep sending a message. It, it, this is the method of the puzzle of dogs. Release them for pain. Often enough, eventually the body will give up feeling in pain. Yeah. And that's okay. But if I can... If you can discover what's really happening to the person and tap into that, you're shortcutting the whole process. Yeah. So I would rather do that. Sometimes you can't. So when we did her yesterday, it was a bit unfair. But you know, but it, but no, but it demonstrates really the point that it's better to figure out what's going on for the person, what is the constitution, what's really the under the biggest underlying issues. Start working with those, and only then add tricks for the swallowing. I think possibly my, my um, difficulty lies in not really totally seeing the whole picture on the Western, the Western anatomy, physiology, the physiology. So is With the, him or in general? Well, maybe in general, I don't know. So, like, you know, I've got a kind of a, a pr pretty good map, but I don't have all the details, so the thyroid, no I don't know. No one has all the details. Yeah. No one has And how that. things relate to each other. And I mean, look, you, you get someone who teaches uh, anatomy and physiology in, in medical school, they don't have all the details. Mm. You know, work with, it. I mean, my encouragement is for you to work with what you have mm. and don't worry about what you don't have. <laughs> because you can't, you can't worry about what you don't have. You don't have it, you don't have it. So you, you'll figure something out. So just keep experimenting until you, you know, but the thing is, I mean, look, is there an anatomy book that's going to say that thyroid and swallowing are related? In all likelihood, no. Yeah. Okay. But I think it makes it makes sense. The thyroid is here. Yeah. The tongue is right above it. The root of the tongue and the thyroid are somewhat really, You know, there's tissue in between. It's not like the, It's not like the tongue starts from the thyroid. Okay. But they, it's all. You know. So if something's happening in this region, it's mm -hmm. going to start having repercussions in other tissues in the region. That makes sense. Which is a little different than saying, oh, I need to know, you know, I really need to understand how the little toe and the thyroid are related. That, there's a big difference mm -hmm. between, mm -hmm. yeah, that needs some, there's some expertise that apparently went into understanding. But you're talking about something that's in the same region. You don't have to prove yourself correct that the thyroid and the tongue and the swallowing are related. You don't have to have a textbook confirmation for that. All you have to say is, hmm, they're in the same region. It kind of makes sense. Let me see if treating the thyroid is going to help him and make it more mm. stay better. Mm. And then, yeah. you know, then you say to yourself, okay, you know, it's like you don't have to have 100% um, clarity. That's what the testing is all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Another really general well, sorry to no, no, no. A really general question is is hypertension, essential hypertension. Is, is hyper. Hyper. Yeah, high blood right. pressure. Yeah. No known cause. And responds to high meds and then after a week or so stops responding to the high meds and the blood pressure goes back up again. Yeah. So these are again usually somewhat related to the autonomic nervous system as well as the kidneys. As well as the As well as the kidneys. There's a weakness in the kidneys for these people, in my opinion. So you have to strengthen the kidneys. So, so work kidney, and then in the back work on maybe you know, like strengthening the kidney by strengthening the quadratus lumborum. 
What in the quadratus laborum? <laughs> Strengthening Thank the quadratus laborum. So you can do needle and moxa, something like that, on the quadratus laborum. But these people generally uh, are going to have, because the kidney controls blood pressure. Has a, a kidney has a huge effect on blood pressure, not just through adrenals, but also through a whole bunch of series of um, proteins that, the, that, that decide on, on how the blood pressure is manipulated. So, and I don't know the full physiology on this. <laughs> so if I did, I'd be working in some weird lab. Yeah. <laughs> so, because it's not what I do. Do you have any recommendations for diet on, on that? For diet on that? Yeah. Either supplements or, or, or not. No, uh, not really. I would try. Well, I mean, you'd have to look at their diet and see if there's anything that clearly raises the blood pressure. Um, but no, I, I, I don't want to, because that's really not quite my field. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, people that have elevated blood pressure at night time only, is that a good thing? I don't know. I don't have it. Don't know. I would still treat it as something because what happens is there's a switch in the autonomic nervous system at night, right? So I'd still assume, I would say it's still autonomic nervous system and still I would look at kidneys because I think also the kidneys work differently at night. Um, okay, so for example, how many times, you know, I, I don't need an answer, but do it, just think about yourself. How many times do you go pee during the day? Or in an eight hour period in a day, and how many times do you get up at night to pee? Chances are that during the day you're peeing more. Is that correct? Okay. So, the kidneys clearly are filtrating at a different rate during the day and the night. Now, I can tell you that someone like myself, for example, who has a, not who has a weird nervous system, it's exactly the opposite. Okay? Because I've, I've actually. Had, I've had the misfortune of having to <laughs> figure out exactly how much urine I'm creating at night. <laughs> and I'm creating like probably twice as much during the night than during the day. Okay? So you can see how the production of urine and the autonomic nervous system are related. Okay, when people have weird, their standard nervous system should be, because ideally you don't get up at night to pee, right? Ideally. Okay, now some of us may say, well, that's a very nice ideal, but it's not relevant for me. But then you sort of say, no, because, you know, it's like, also, you know, you probably, you know, in clinic when you ask people how many times do you get up, you know, if they start saying, well, more than two or three, it's like you go, okay, something. I mean, there are people who get up every hour. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's something that's not quite right, clearly not quite right about it. So, you know, yes, we say that after a certain age, most people seem to get up at night, you know. But, you know, if it's too, if there's too much of that happening, you kind of go, that's clearly wrong. Okay, and it's different than the people, and a lot of these people don't have to constantly go to the bathroom during the day. It's just at night. So there is some connection between the way the kidneys filter, the whole function of the kidneys and the nervous system. Okay, now we started from, what was the question? Night. So I would say that it, it's related to um, to the nervous system, because the ki something's happening with the kidneys. The, the kidneys are changing function at night. Therefore, they're sending messages to for the blood pressure to also change, and the nervous system is changing at night, sending different messages. So together, in that particular organism, the, those those combined messages between the kidney and the autonomic nervous system are creating a, an opportunity for high blood pressure. That would be, so I would work on the kidneys and I would work on the autonomic nervous system. Thank you. All right, let's turn it over. Actually, before we turn it over, I'd like to, if you don't sitting in or standing and tell us how the heavy is. Oh, yes, that's right. Which my name is. Thank you. Thank you. There's definitely air in it. Yeah, poor bugger. Is it possible, you know, stand up and walk around and then it's a bit of more to test than just sit? Feels weird because obviously I'd be lying still. Yes, of course, of course. But yeah, legs feel less heavy. Okay. Yeah. 
and the arms wouldn't have started yet. Go, go and walk to the door. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give you a nice little dress. And <laughs> high heel shoes. Showing the latest t-shirt. Yes. Now, what's interesting about her, the way she walks, is she doesn't straighten her knees all the way when she walks. Did you notice that? No. Anyone else? Want to go ahead and do the catwalk again. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, she is. Do you, do you, do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's almost like, especially the right leg doesn't fully straighten. Okay. All right. Let's have you face down. Which is, I mean, yes, it could be cardiac, but I, you know, it's much more likely to be the breast. <coughs> so small intestine 11 is, is cardiac on the left, digestion on the right, and it's breast shoe, if you like, on either side. Hmm? Small intestine 11. Okay. So she has discomfort here, so I, I want to be able to address that. Anything here? No. Yeah. Yes. So right side. So not so much autonomic nervous system. This side has to do with oxygen. I mean, not this side. This area of the inner border of the scapula has to do with oxygenation of, of the body. Okay. Circulation oxygen. It's right behind. It's it's all your circulatory systems are right here. Although granted, they're more on the left. But so this tends to be, you know, so in fatigue and stuff, that, why do you think they say UB43 is so, you know, they make it so mysterious, mm -hmm. Gawang Shu, the area between the heart and the blah, blah, and the blah, blah. But, you know, it's like, it's so good for people with chronic consumptive diseases. It has to do with creating more blood, more oxygenation, more action in the blood. Okay, this area is very important for circulation. So if she feels heavy, this is important. Okay, and you have a little bit of discomfort, right? Yeah. Okay. And some discomfort here, right? Yeah. Okay. The right side only? No, no, circulation is both sides. Okay. You know, the oxygenation, because lungs exist on both sides. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, it's like, if it's only left, I would say it's either autonomic nervous system or cardiac okay. or heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, remember we started with her, we also said that there's a tri problem, and then when she walks, I'm saying she, she's not strengthening, straightening the leg. It's, I want to know if there's something that I can, first of all, is there any discomfort here? Yeah, but. There is, okay. It's a little puffy, that's why I was asking. How about now? No, it's better. It's better? Okay. How's this done? Better. How much is better? Three quarters better. Three quarters, okay, that's acceptable. And you have here, right? That's not particularly better. Wait, wait, I'm not pressing that. Oh, I'm just holding. Okay, I just want to make sure I have the right place. Okay. So, how about now? Yeah. It is better. Um, better there, not so much there. Okay, that's fair enough. There is another. I mean, that's, for this to work on this side is, is really just... It's this side that it's... Le Right for right will, will work, but I'm just I'm testing the left just to see if there's some effect, just to get some idea. Oh yeah, UB36. Uh -huh. and, and you're straight down. Straight down, yes. Okay. So this is okay now? Yeah. But this is not. That's, yeah. Okay. And how much now? Better. Okay, how much is left? Uh, it's gone. It's gone, okay. So, I know this is not exactly UB36 because it's a little medial in her case. Okay. Now, I, you can use more than one here. You can go boom, boom, boom if you like. It's totally acceptable. 
Were you trying to feel the sitting bone when you went down? Uh, yeah, but I'm also trying to feel where the, the, um, the muscle attachment, so I guess it's the ligament, is, feels torqued or weird or something like that. So I'm, I'm really not, my aim is not the sitting bone, my aim is the muscle. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, what was your thinking that um, bladder 36 could relieve the skeptic? Lack of try. Support the support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if she's walking in this sort of downward trend kind of thing, I want to like yeah. zip up, you know, whatever. I don't know, you know, I push her up from here. You know, because her main complaint, I mean, she even says, I, it's hard for me to lift. I don't have support. It, it, I mean, she's describing something that not just the point name, but the point location suggests to you. Look, because if I'm going to sit on you be 36, and, you know, like, it's going to be very hard to get up. Okay? But if I'm actually on the thigh, then all I have to do is get up. <laughs> you know, all I have to do is lift the leg. But I mean, really, I mean, look, when I'm here, when I'm not on UB, when UB36 is kind of slow, even lifting my arm is hard. And I know you're thinking because my shoulder is slumped, but I'll do it without my shoulder slumping. Okay? So now I'm not sitting on UB36, and I'm trying to lift my arm, and I'm, I'm not rolled. It's hard. The moment I'm on the sit bone, it, everything gets lighter. So there's a lack of activation for many people at UB36, and we need to oops, we need to, to start activating it. So. And you you don't needle up the channel then because that would be going against the channel. No, just I don't care. I, I wouldn't have cared. I'm quite honest. I think it's a little hard to get it up the channel in this in this place, but I, I seem to go 90 degrees, and it seems to be. And because it is fatigue and, you know, spleen, blah, 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 we'll, we'll go for T11, T12. She doesn't have anything spectacularly um, worth talking about here. Uh, some people do. A lot of people do, actually. A lot of people have, like, the vertebrae around T11, T12 feels gummier, puffier than the other vertebrae. But as it happens, she doesn't, but it's more for the dogma. Um, If you, were, if you were like treating someone and, and they said, oh, this has always been like this since I've had a cold or the virus, when would you think about using, like, if, could you check the occiput again? And if it was still tender, would you think you'd keep on or whatever that one is? You know, the, the three, like the four. Three, oh, the e e econ. Yeah. E econ is for, not so much, it's, it's for things that started with a fever. Oh, with a fever. Not necessarily something that started with a wind attack. Okay. Necessarily. It's not quite the same thing. Uh -huh. But, um... How's your UB12 now? It's a little bit, but much better. There's still a little bit. Okay, yeah. fair enough. All right. This one and this one? No, just the right. Just the right. Because okay. remember, she's liver type, so. Mm. How's now? Better. How much is left? Mm, gone. Gone, okay. The reason why, do 15, I'm not looking at wind because I think it's do 16 that has the wind character in it, but who knows what's the difference between 15 and 16, right? So you could say, you want to say wind, that's fine. I'm actually looking at, yeah, lift it up. <laughs> this is really, because that's the symptom, she literally came with, with a symptom that said that. Yeah. And finally, I do need to look at the liver. Anything here, too? Yeah, okay. The third. Okay, excuse me. And how's now? Better. Uh, but not great. Hold on, sorry. Okay. Left UB35 for, for liver. Now? Yeah, it's gone. That's gone. Okay. So any liver type. No matter what you did because of liver on the front, on the back it's going to translate you to left UB35. And you could add UB18 if you want. So we'll find out if we, if we do or don't. 
something here? Yeah. Here also? Yeah. Okay. So I just want to make sure that's a little bit better before I... Okay, hold on. This one, correct? Yeah. Okay. How's that? Better. How much is left? A little bit. Okay, a little bit. So small intestine 9, 10, because basically, sp just structurally stre spread it out. Against, still on the she, at UB17, she, she had some. Okay. You know, which is the liver, which UB35 didn't fully do. So. Now they're both exposed, and you can see both. You be, I would say it's UB17 rather than 18 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rest of the day. Thank you. Oh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's. Um, she's in a good position to do the thyroid points because she has thyroid also, right? So we might as well. Because we wanted to see them. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The tendon, just go over. And then, oops, sorry, should have opened the needle first. So you bend the ear, you find the tendon, go underneath it, and then the needling direction is upwards and out. Uh, well, actually, I'd say outwards and in. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm going to look at the other side because I didn't see it. So. Is that the first Sometimes hard to find. Uh, the tendon is not always so easy to find, yes. Yeah, it's yeah, mine, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a nice tendon. So, so I'm pulling the ear down, finding the tendon, and then needling up and in. And some of us will have them more spread apart, and some of us will have them all squished together and in, in, in appear like one. So, but it should... My understanding is that it's the lowest one. Mm -hmm. okay. Also, okay, there's those points. You know, you want to get to, to the bet, to your strongest first. So you know. So yes, it, it's a lot easier to get that that one than those other ones. I think. Well, and these other ones are so much harder <coughs> to test against. Yeah, yeah. So those ones I actually use. If somebody has a shoulder problem, I will test these points. But yeah. for thyroid, he's got a shoulder and a thyroid. We're talking about your, your chef. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's going to depend on per, per patient what I'm going to, you know. But originally, yeah, it was the thyroid, the thyroid point plus the shoulder. And the thyroid point is very good for throat and neck in general. You know, even just people have neck pain, like I'm turning side to say, side, they have a problem. That point, the thyroid point. That's why I'm saying it's not so much on... I can tell you anatomically what's going to happen. It's just that I'm saying that 
I know that a point that I call thyroid point actually does neck in general as a whole. Yes. Oh, I thought it was a two. Oh, I, I took it from. Okay, so let's. Okay, so sorry, I I miss I miscalculated. Let's do lunch now. Uh, we're going to stay here for a few more minutes to take you out. Um, and come back at 1.25 if we possibly can. Should we go to you? Are we doing all the time together? Yes. Yeah. Would you like to say the again? That would be fine. <laughs> Thank you. Are you coming to the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm very sorry, guys. Yeah, we should watch you. Oh, no. So. What did you have? What did you have last time? So when you were yes. lunch, before you anything not what do you look at that curry? Yeah. That, um, curry yeah. 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 I had a green curry, which was very nice. It wasn't particularly spicy. No, 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 I don't mind. There's pad Thai noodles. Yeah.